guys welcome back to my channel today I have another book review for you guys now if you are around my age you probably either remember watching or reading the Hunger Games books or watching the movies did you ever wonder about president's obsession with the roses because I did or why the Hunger Games are such a popular event in the capital well today I'm going to be going over a ballad of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the new prequel novel to the Hunger Games series, which gives the backstory behind President Snow. And it answers a few of the questions I just brought up along with quite a few more. So we're going to go ahead and get right on into this. <sighs> Ambition will fuel him. Competition will drive him but power has its price. It is the morning of the reaping that will kick off the 10th annual Hunger Games. In the capital, 18-year-old Coriolanus Snow is preparing for his one shot at glory as a mentor in the games. The once mighty House of Snow has fallen on hard times, its fate hanging on the slender chance that Coriolanus will be able to outcharm, outwit, and outmaneuver his fellow students to mentor the winning tribute. The odds are against him. He's been given the humiliating assignment of mentoring the female tribute from District 12, the lowest of the low. Their fates are now completely intertwined. Every choice Coriolanus makes will lead to favor or failure, triumph or ruin. Inside the arena, it will be a fight to the death. Outside the arena, Coriolanus starts to feel for his doomed tribute and must weigh his need to follow the rules against his desire to survive, no matter what it takes. So, in this novel, we are told the story of Coriolanus Snow. I will probably be calling him Corio like his cousin does in the novel from here on out because I can't say that name easily. A high school senior with a unique opportunity to be a mentor for the Hunger Games, which at this point was a strongly disliked event that nobody ever watched. Snow winds up having to be the mentor of the District 12 female tribute, who ends up being a lot feistier than any of them had planned since she was the female and from District 12. Between trying to keep her alive, dealing with his fellow mentors who go a little nuts, <laughs> a crazy headmaster who doesn't like him for reasons that are told later in the novel, and a games coordinator with some really sick and sadistic ideas, Snow also has to devise a way to keep his family fed without letting the world know that the powerful Snow family is flat broke. They have nothing. Poisoning, snake attacks, rats, and deceit are just some of the many aspects that come to view during the 10th Hunger Games that you will read about inside of this novel. Now I'm trying not to give too many spoilers away so I'm not getting too much further into the actual plot. I'm going to tell you the difference between the games inside of these books and the original, this book and the original ones. And I'm going to go through the difference in the arenas. But if you want to know more about the actual storyline, go ahead and read the book yourself. <laughs> so difference between the games. One of the things I want to go over is the difference between the games in the original Hunger Games and the games in the prequel. To start with, you should know that the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is based during the 10th Hunger Games, as it says on the inside of the book, before a lot of the rules were in place. One of the big differences is how the tributes were treated. During the Hunger Games in the original books, the tributes were well fed before the games and they had the opportunity to train. In the 10th Hunger Games, the tributes were kept in cages in the zoo so that they could be stared at by capital citizens. They were hardly ever fed. And the 10th Hunger Games were also the first ones to have mentors. At this point, they were not surviving tributes. They were high school students who were recruited to try and get more viewers because nobody wanted to watch the games and they wanted to make it a very popular thing to do. So the high schoolers were given the job of trying to figure out how to make it a game that people wanted to watch and how to make their tribute survive. And the students were promised basically a full ride to college if their tribute won. The other thing I want to discuss is the difference between the arenas. The arenas in the first Hunger Games movie and the books changed for every Hunger Games. It was always held at a different location 
and the tributes were always dressed to be able to withstand the elements in the arena to give them a little bit of an advantage so they didn't just die. In the original Hunger Games, inside of the Battle of the Songbirds and Snakes, the arena is literally just a sports stadium. Like, take one of the baseball, big baseball stadiums, and it was something like that. Where the audience sits in the bleachers to watch. And this game is the beginning of one of the very big parts of the Hunger Games that shows up inside of the original books. Because this is the first game where they're able to make bets on the tributes and sponsors are able to send stuff in. Because previously, all the previous Hunger Games before the 10th, their tributes were dying from starvation and things like that before they even made it into the arena. So this was the first game where they were allowed to do that kind of stuff. So overall on this book, I'd give it a four out of five. When I first started the book, I was a little worried about the fact that this book was released so many years after the original books, but I was surprised by how good this book was. It definitely held up to the level of the Hunger Games. The book tells an interesting story about how Snow came to be the sadistic, powerful person that he is, which made it difficult because I found it really hard to root for him during the book because I know who Snow turned into. But there was parts where I really did want to root for him. I just don't feel I could do it because I know what happens to him and who he becomes. If you decide to read this book, pay close attention to some of the names in it. There are a lot of references to the families and the characters inside of the main books. And you'll recognize quite a few of the names, which is something that I noticed a lot through it. Such as Heavensby. Who is the game maker, I believe, in one of the other books. And yeah. So, thank you for watching, guys. As I said, I try not to put too many spoilers in. Which, hopefully that worked out. There is still a lot to be read in this book. And definitely check it out for yourself. Because this book is just as good as the previous ones. Suzanne Collins definitely kept it on the same level. And that's great. So, like, subscribe. You know the deal. Thanks for watching, guys. For my fun review of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.